The UK housing market has changed forever. Imagine a world where owning your own home is a distant dream for many. In the next few minutes, we'll uncover how the housing market has shifted from a universal goal to an exclusive privilege and why this matters more than ever. Stay tuned. In the wake of World War II, we witnessed a true renaissance in home ownership, a dream that transcended societal lines, allowing a diverse workforce to claim their slice of the residential pie. This era marked a surge in home ownership rates, embedding the concept deep into the national consciousness. For Americans, the ultimate aspiration may be immense wealth, but for Brits, it's the simple joy of owning one's home. However, this dream faces modern challenges with house prices to income ratios skyrocketing to Victorian era heights, leaving a new generation struggling on the sidelines of the property market. Today, shared accommodations and long-term renting are becoming the norm for those in their 40s and 50s. This shift in the housing landscape is reshaping our lifestyles and societal structures. But what's behind this elusive home ownership ladder? Since the mid 90s, house prices have ballooned by 160%, while young workers' incomes have crawled up by just 23%. This disparity has made home ownership a privilege for high earners or those with affluent parents. In 1970, only 19% needed parental assistance to buy a home. By 2020, this number leaped to 53%. A striking Financial Times graph illustrates the stark reality. Without wealthy parents, you'd need to earn an extra £25,000 annually to afford a home. This situation has amplified wealth inequality, transforming housing from a universal equaliser to a divisive force. House price to income ratios are at their highest since 1870, a period not known for its equality. On the brighter side, these ratios are projected to decline thanks to stabilising house prices and increasing wages. Yet, even if the ratio drops to seven times income, it remains well above historical norms. For young households today, saving for a deposit takes around 19 years. A far cry from the three years required in 1986, this reality has reshaped living patterns, increasing the number of young adults living with their parents and making private renting a permanent state rather than a temporary bridge to home ownership. Um, but I've had my eviction notice and knowing that my baby's literally going to be a month old and we've got nowhere to go. Potentially, we're going to be homeless in the middle of winter, which is marvellous. So, you know, we made this house a home. It's a home for us. And did you ever think that you'd have to move out? No. Despite higher interest rates impacting affordability, the market is buoyed by cash-rich buyers and those with fully paid mortgages. If home ownership is a cross-political goal, why is it slipping away? Here are five key reasons. One. Post-war wage growth has slowed since 2010, barely keeping pace. Two, the 1980s and 1990s saw financial deregulation, allowing for more liberal lending. This trend led to a spike in household debt, but post-2008 lending criteria tightened significantly. Three, government schemes like Help to Buy, which once assisted young buyers, have been scaled back. Four, the Right to Buy scheme, while boosting home ownership, significantly depleted social housing stocks. Five, the UK has fallen behind in building new homes, with a housing shortfall and a lack of construction keeping up with population growth. The consequences of this new housing paradigm are profound. For one, our pension system reliant on mortgage-free retirees, or those in subsidised housing, faces a crisis with the advent of pensioners burdened by market rents. Wealth inequality is on the rise, as property becomes a primary source of wealth. Younger generations grapple with stagnant wages, high student debts and an inaccessible housing market, pushing them to extreme work hours and multiple jobs. The private rented sector's expansion necessitates increased government spending on housing benefits, impacting public finances and the struggle against homelessness. Housing trends also influence household formation, with more young adults living with parents or in overcrowded conditions. This mismatch in housing occupancy calls for a targeted approach to housing supply, particularly for the elderly. Meanwhile, the housing market's stagnation due to fewer transactions is reshaping economic dynamics. 
monetary policy, traditionally used to combat inflation, is less effective in a landscape where fewer people hold variable mortgages. In response, we must prioritise building more homes, particularly in high-density urban areas, and address skill shortages in the construction sector. While market reliance has its place, government intervention in building high-quality, affordable housing is crucial. A well-functioning rental sector can offer benefits like geographic mobility, though the UK's current private rental market needs significant improvements. Although some people are optimistic that recent interest rate hikes would lead to affordability, the future of housing prices is still uncertain. The stability of the housing market, however, points to a more nuanced picture. This analysis explores the various elements that impact the market and speculates on whether price declines or sustained stability may occur. For more insightful analysis and updates on this evolving story, make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you have thoughts or experiences to share about the housing market, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.